Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about intracellular pigments. Now pigments they are basically colored substances which are normal constituents of the cell like melanin or they can accumulate in the cells only under certain pathologies. They can be mainly divided into exogenous pigment that are they are coming from outside of the body and the endogenous pigment that is they are synthesized within the body itself. Going to the exogenous pigment. A very important exogenous pigment is carbon. Now carbon is mostly deposited in all individuals. Now when the carbon it is inhaled it is picked up by the macrophages within the alveoli and it accumulates and blackens the tissues of the lung and this is known as anthracosis. However it doesn't lead to any pathology. In cases of coal miners sometimes there is aggregates of carbon deposition and this aggregates can lead to fibroblastic reaction and even emphysema and a serious lung disease known as coal worker pneumoconiosis. The carbon it is black in color and we can see in this picture it is deposited in the alveoli and has a very characteristic black color. Going to another exogenous pigment that is tattooing. It is a form of localized exogenous pigmentation of the skin. Here the pigments they are phagocytosed by the dermal macrophages. Another route of exogenous pigments is through ingestion. And in this there are pigments such as keratinemia. It is yellowish red coloration of the skin which is caused by excessive ingestion of the carrots. In case of chronic lead poisoning, there is characteristic blue line at the gums and argyria. It is chronic ingestion of silver compounds which leads to brownish pigmentation in the skin, bowel and the kidneys. Going to the endogenous pigments. Firstly, we will discuss about the melanin. Melanin is a brownish black pigment. This is a non-hemoglobin derived pigment. And it is mostly present in the hair, skin, choroid of the eye, meninges and the adrenal medulla. Now, this is synthesized in case of skin by cells known as melanocytes. And the melanocytes, they are mostly present in the basal layer of the epidermis. We can see here, this is the basal layer of the epidermis where the melanocytes are present and these melanocytes they have a special enzyme known as tyrosinase which leads to production of the melanin from the amino acid tyrosine. Now going to uh, the disorders associated with the melanin production. Now disorders associated with excess of melanin they are Edison's disease, cholesma during pregnancy, in case of chronic arsenic poisoning there is characteristic raindrop pigmentation of the skin, there are cafe light spots which are seen in neurofibromatosis, in Pute Jagger syndrome there is characteristic perioral pigmentation and lastly melanotic tumors. Now melanotic tumors they can be benign like nevi or can be malignant like melanoma and they are both associated with hyperpigmentation mostly they are associated with hyperpigmentation now going to the uh, hypopigmentation now first and very important one is albinism it is a form of generalized hypopigmentation in which there is defect there is genetic defect in the tyrosinase activity of the melanocytes and therefore no melanin is formed second is leucoderma it is a form of partial albinism. Then is vitiligo. It is a form of local hypopigmentation of the skin. And also focal hypopigmentation of the skin can be seen associated with diseases such as leprosy, in scar tissues, associated with healing of wounds, hypopigmentation can be seen. Now going to other type of pigment seen in case of, seen in case of alkaptonuria. Now in alkaptonuria, there is defect in an enzyme used for processing of phenyl, alanine and tyrosine amino acid and homogenistic acid are intermediate here accumulates in the tissues and this is pigmented and this is known as ochronosis. The homogenistic acid here accumulates in cartilages, capsules of the joints ligaments and tendons and give it gives it a brownish black pigmentation now going to a very important category that is hemoprotein derived pigments these uh, 
pigments they are endogenous pigments firstly and they are derived from hemoglobin or their breakdown products now a very important one is hemosiderin another is bilirubin firstly we will discuss the hemosiderin now hemosiderin it is hemoglobin derived it is golden yellow to brown pigment it's a granular pigment and is mostly found in the mononuclear phagocytic cells of the bone marrow spleen liver and it is a form of storage form of iron now mostly when the iron is in excess it is associated with a protein known as apoferritin it forms ferritin but when there is local or systemic excess of the iron this ferritin it tend to form the hemosiderin granules and the hemosiderin granules as we already discussed it is yellowish to brown as we can see in this picture this is yellowish to brown pigment and is present in the mononuclear phagocytic cells of the spleen liver okay now the diseases associated with the hemosiderin are mainly the cause is firstly it is associated when there is increased breakdown of the red blood cells as seen in the hemolytic anemias and secondly when there is systemic overload of the iron and the systemic overload of the iron can be seen in case of primary hemochromatosis it can be seen due to secondary causes like thalassemia where there is excessive breakdown of the red blood cells also and secondly for treatment there is multiple blood transfusions which are given so there is uh, overload of the iron there is sideroblastic anemia there are multiple blood transfusion in various diseases these all are associated with excessive storage of the hemosiderin we are not discussing these in detail this is a separate topic altogether going to the bilirubin now the bilirubin is a normal pigment which is present in the bile and is formed from the heme moiety of the hemoglobin now excess of bilirubin it is known as jaundice and the main causes they can be either it can be prehepatic due to hemolytic anemias it can be due to hepatic due to any defect in the hepatocytes to conjugate the bilirubin or it can be causes can be post hepatic or obstructive in which there is obstruction to the outflow of the bilirubin now going to another pigment hemozoin pigment which is seen in mostly chronic malaria and the pigment known as formalin pigment which is seen when the blood rich tissues they are preserved in the formalin solution in the formaldehyde solution going to another pigment that is lipofuscin it is known as wear and tear pigment it is yellowish brown in color and is mostly prominent in the liver and heart of the aging patients or patients as having severe malnutrition or cancer cachexia and therefore it is also named as wear and tear pigment because it is associated with old age now it is how it is derived is it is derived through the lipid peroxidation of the lipids of the subcellular membranes and in the tissue sections it appears as a yellowish brown pigment it is granular it is present in the cytoplasm mostly the location is perinuclear of the lipofuscin pigment uh, this was all about the pigments please like share and subscribe ask any query regarding the topic thanks for watching this video